Greetings, Apostles for White Wellbeing. I hope you can see me here from the Blue Ninja. All my best and warmest love to Wilhelmina and Matthew Bayer, the Blue Ninja 2, Brad C, the Blue Ninja 3, each and every one else out there, of course. Art Acrobats, Irish Ice, Elaine Sabatino, Raymond Foster, Yiz the Eunuch, No White Gilt Clips, Nancy Drew, Vivian Fire, DHMC, Justin, Anna, Ye Old European, Coastal Rains, Buddy Duddy, Full Reptile, Base Red Pill Boycott Coke Products, Azimuth Clark, and everybody else. Uh, so, doing this blind at the moment here for the intro real quick and now I'm going to flip the camera around and make this a view of what I'm looking at here in Bishkek. So we'll do this as a little bit of a walk through through Bishkek and first off as I've talked about, about the differences in bio spirits and the evidence of that in the environments that different bio spirits build, as we all know. Uh, you can notice, you know, one thing I notice in every non-Western country is they seem to have a hard time paving sidewalks. <laughs> I, get, I get foot aches and uh, I got a foot ache right now. <laughs> um, have had, you know, all kinds of issues pop up. You know, you got these ledges like right here, drop-offs all the time. So, dealing with aches, dealing with... <clears throat> dealing with navigating the jungle and trying not to injure yourself, Just simply walking on the sidewalk. Um in places like this so that's the first comment just to start off and um, that's just one thing I've noticed ever since I stepped outside of the West my very first time um, as you all can tell um, I'm a traveler I've traveled a fair bit and the, the first time I stepped out of the country was way back like 20 years ago in college went to Mexico and drove there with a friend uh, from the west coast of America I just drove straight down across the California border into Mexico and that was my my first real glimpse of outside the west and it's, it's right next door on the southern side to the U.S. You don't have to go very far to see a totally different biospirit. And I remember when, as soon as we crossed the border, to me it was like a whole different world that I did not know existed. I was, you know, only about 21 years old or so, pretty darn young, and... I had no idea that, you know, things could look like that, uh, what I saw in Mexico there. Um, to me, it was like, literally, I remember as, as soon as we drove across, it was literally like I was looking around and I felt like I was on a different planet, literally. And that was because of, you know, the environment, obviously. And what I remember noticing in particular was, you know, things like what we see straight ahead. Uh, and in Mexico, as soon as we crossed the border, it was clear. If there would have been no actual border, if there would have been no gate, you know, that we had to, to go past and everything, I would have known. And I think anyone could know that you've just crossed into a different world just by looking at your surroundings. And I remember as soon as we crossed, it was like, whoa, we are, in a, we are on a different planet now. That was the exact feeling. And the reason is, is because 
I remember specifically noticing that it just seemed like there was trash heaps everywhere. As soon as you cross the border in Mexico, I looked to the side of the road as we were driving, and it just seemed like there were just, you know, mountains of trash. And I remember seeing, you know, uh, junk cars, cars, you know, that were in these trash piles, just mountainous trash piles like I had never seen. Mountains of dirt, which is trash caked up to the sky of every kind, including trash cars, cars that were part of that trash. And I thought, whoa, I, I, I have never seen trash like that. I have never seen just mountains of trash, including vehicles, as part of the landscape. <laughs> and then in Mexico, you know, I noticed further that, again, the sidewalks, <laughs> that was one of the other main things that, that I remembered uh, was a notable thing for me is, man, the sidewalks, they, they don't have, you know, um, uh, consistent pavement um, and, you know, kind of like what we're walking on right here. I mean, That was the first one of the things that really stood out. Geez, they don't have regular sidewalks. You know, you got a little bit of pavement and then you got dirt and you got a drop off and the sidewalk just goes away. And I thought that was one thing that I thought, okay, I guess I won't take that for granted in the U.S. anymore. Not every place has sidewalks. So, you know, all these things, uh, you know, and that just takes me back to, you know, this kind of thing with the, with the sidewalks and the rough pavement, the lack of pavement. That takes me back to the very first time I stepped out outside of the West, when it was that first shock. And now I know completely what it's all about. It's not a shock anymore. But um, that's one thing that <laughs> is a non-Western uh, characteristic that the lack of consistent pavement <laughs> you'll notice just having a smooth uh, sidewalk is not you know kind of hard to come by in most non-western a lot of non-western countries not all of course but that is uh, it's one of the things you can commonly find outside of the West but anyway that's you know um, just a couple of highlightable things there um, and <clears throat> um, so we get a look at the moon above. Uh, nice scene at night here. Sun just went down. Um, so, so those things. Um, you know, I've come to learn, as we all have, that that was the lesson for me back then, when I first stepped out of the West into Mexico, and my first lesson as a youngster, you know, the, the ripe age of 21, realizing, wow, not everywhere is like the West, you know? Things, things that people in the West that haven't been outside of it take for granted, uh, you realize are, are, not, <laughs> are not the norm in most of the world. And, you know, ever since then, it's been eye-opening experiences and just learning about how much is out there outside of the West. A lot of it is jungle-type stuff. <laughs> Um, and now, as I said, it's, it's no shock at all, um, you know, because of experience some years later, uh, but, you know, this is a good experience for everyone to have, especially, uh, every Westerner, I think, should step outside to realize that there are big differences small and big differences uh, in in the civilizations and Westerners need to understand that things that they think are just 
taken for granted. Just the way the world works. Just the way humans work. Oh, all humans must do it this way. You know? Every, every country and city must be similar to this. You know, Westerners need to understand that what they think is just basic civilization, cities, and so forth, that is Western. Okay? That is not the norm in most of the world. Um, so we need to understand that we do have, you know, a bio spirit and we do have a way of doing things. And our way of doing things is not just the norm that every human being does, and that's just the way cities are built by anyone on planet Earth. What you see in America or in the West, no, that is our way of doing it. Other peoples in other parts of the world, like here in Kyrgyzstan, they have quite a different way of doing it. I mean, this is a house right here. That's a gate. That's their idea of a gate. <laughs> um, and this is their idea of a fence. You know, and uh, as, as one example. But... You know, there are quite different ways that other peoples in the world of other, diff of, of other biospirits do things, as we all know. So, just a little taste of it here. Uh, most of us probably, probably know the deal with all this, but just a little, little sum of the sights around here. Nothing glamorous, <laughs> you know, down another street there. Everything's kind of designed the same way. Uh, from a Western perspective, it would not be considered very creative. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, you know, that's, that's their way. So, <clears throat> now I, I later had another huge shock that I had traveling was going to China. Uh, about nine years after my first, after that Mexico trip, China was the next big, big, huge shocker. That was where I really felt like I was on a different planet, more so than I ever had in my life. Um, you know, just everything different, different language, different, different people, different environment everything was completely different felt like uh, it was a complete fish out of water in every single way and um, you know since then I've continued the travels and it doesn't shock me so much anymore but but I'm very well aware of it more so than ever um, so we'll uh, head on back here I think folks the other way <laughs> Sometimes you never know when the road's just gonna kind of run out on you, but um, Anyway, so that wasn't the main point here actually <laughs> big surprise um, just a little Little commentary on the scenery which is different biosphere We all know the deal with that very well Just a little bit of an example here and again, I do recommend Everybody travel. Westerners, travel. You don't have to go crazy. You know, I think I might have overdone it with the traveling. And, you know, there is a point where... As we bolt across the street there. And uh, try to stay alive here, folks. There is a point where it feels like it can be overdone. I'm kind of at that point. <laughs> where I feel like uh, I may have traveled a little bit too much. Um, but, you know, you don't have to go to half the countries in the world, but at least some, at least a few, and at least, at least one non-Western. Every Westerner should go to at least one little pizza shop there. Every every Westerner should go to at least one non-Western country um, for the reason I talked about, as we all know. 
just to see the difference in biosphere. Um, so it's very helpful. That's what, what helped me a lot in my process of waking up to white erasure, waking up to anti-whitism, knowing that, hey, there is something wrong in the world. Couldn't quite put my finger on it. Um, but gradually realized that phrases like diversity, and I remember hearing someone propose that mm, diversity is actually just less white people. And the first time I heard that, I thought, bingo, that is what it is. And I was abroad in Thailand at the time when I first heard that, back in 2017, five years ago. First time I heard... Um, little car body shop there, maybe. Um, the first time I heard that, that was what started getting me awoken to the fact that, that all the, the junk going on in the world is basically anti-white. And I started realizing, hey, wait a minute. We're the targets as whites. You know, Western kind is being targeted. Oh man, this is, this is not going to fly with me. This is not going to fly with this blue ninja. And for a while I was just very angry about it. I didn't have the tools, uh, as we all do now, of going free, of course, from the great Jason Kuna, uh, to actually do something about it. So for, for about two years or so, I was just really bitter and upset, knowing that we are being erased and GENO sided and I didn't see any way to, to do anything about it. And uh, about two years later, 2019 or so, finally discovered going free, Mr. Jason Kuna, the great Mr. No White Guilt himself. And as soon as I heard it, bingo, latched onto it and went running with it as fast as I could. As you all know, as all of us did, I am positive because we are all the champs of white well-being, Western kind. So, um, you know, but that traveling was a key, a key part of my my understanding of things. It's it's hard to have that real understanding if you haven't gotten outside to really see what's out there. If you're living in a very small little chunk of the world and that's all you know, then you can only see a, a small percentage of, of the picture, so to speak. Um, you know, so it's hard. You just, you just don't know. You're just not aware. You know, you haven't seen it. Nobody showed it to you. But you're looking at, you know, one square inch on a, on a 12 by 12 picture and you start going to some different countries and you start seeing more and more of that picture and you know <clears throat> and then you realize uh, you know then you can just simply see more and you realize what's out there so it's just a matter of just getting the exposure just somehow getting out there to to see things See the world as it is. Um, it's hard to have this stuff explained, as we all know. Um, you know, you can tell someone, hey, look, Western kind's being erased, but if they've spent their entire life in some small village in Iowa, you know, and it's one of the best, most white towns in America remaining, and they don't know that everything out side of that is pretty much carnage and nearly white erased then then they just don't know and you tell them okay you know you you're, you're living in a good town but you're you're one of the last ones you're one of the you're one of the lucky few here you're trying to explain to them look outside most other places it's it's you know it's a lot worse and you try to explain this to someone who's living in um Mayberry, so to speak, uh, Pleasantville, and they have a hard time getting it. They just, they can hear your words, but, you know, 
they don't have any experience to to really drive it home so it's just an idea it's just some concept that doesn't mean a whole lot to them when you explain it to someone that hasn't really experienced it so um, so we all know the deal with this uh, this experience is invaluable uh, without it I you know my wake out process to things probably would have been slower um, you know and uh, less pronounced because having these contrasting experiences out here in the in the jungle where you realize wow it's totally different people in non-western countries put themselves first they, you know, <laughs> they have their culture and their people intact for the most part. Um, you start to see the differences and compare that to the West, back home, and you start to realize, wait a minute, this is different than my country my country, they talk about diversity and stuff. Um, and, you know, why don't these other countries have that? Um, to the extent. And, you know, why do they have their culture and everything and, and I don't get to have that in my home country in the West? Uh, and that was a big part of my, my wake-up process. Um, to see that, that difference and to realize then that, okay, that has been taken away from me on purpose. That <clears throat> my culture, my people, um, you know, homogeneity, that has been taken away from me and my kind on purpose. Um, and so that was a that was a big big part of it for me and i think that would really wake a lot of people up a lot of westerners to see the difference between non-western and western um, civilizations to see that what we've been robbed of basically um, And so this is invaluable. So we all know the deal with this. Um, and I'll get on to a real quick story to wrap it up here, folks, as I rambled on a lot longer about that than I planned on. <laughs> but just a little live commentary. Um, more of the beautiful sidewalks here and <laughs> um, to experience firsthand another bio spirit in case anyone hasn't made it out of the west or can't make it out of the west this is a little taste of it and this would be considered you know not too bad I mean there's traffic lights <laughs> there's plenty of non-western countries uh, without many traffic lights at all um, so this would be relatively orderly driving Pretty, pretty good driving by way of non-Western countries, I would contend. Um, and gotta navigate your way around traffic as a pedestrian, usually, in non-Western countries, and try not to get yourself killed. It's always... <laughs> Um, always something as an objective not to be taken for granted um, anyway on to the to the little story I'll wrap up with folks which was the inspiration for this video I will finally get to um, real quick story uh, continuing a little bit along those lines bio spirits and so forth so at the place where I'm staying the guest house um, uh, 
can see that street lights are not to be taken for granted either in our civilizations. <laughs> um, you never know when the lights could go out. So, um, anyway, real quick story here, folks. Last night at the guest house that I'm staying, there's uh, an interesting variety of people there, as you might imagine, foreigners that are visiting and so forth. And a uh, quick story. And I can't make this stuff up, folks. Um, so again, you know, Westerners may think, yeah, street lights are just for granted. I mean, every street in the world must have street lights. Well, you got street lights over on the other side, and then over here you might just have to walk in the dark. Just gotta walk in, in the complete, nearly pitch black dark sometimes. I've done it a lot. <laughs> Um, so, another aspect of, of non-Western societies in many cases, um, but, uh, last night there is a Saudi Arabian guy staying at the guest house I'm staying at, and he turns out he's a very nice guy. Um, also need to avoid getting attacked by dogs. <laughs> in some of these places. Um, most of them are behind gates, so not a problem. But again, not to be taken for granted. Anyway, this Saudi Arabian guy turned out to be a really nice guy, very kind guy. Oh, very, very nice. Gives people things, gives people food. Very generous, extremely kind. I don't really have a problem with him. Um, and uh, anyway, we had a, a nice little conversation last night. And, uh, and I really enjoyed talking with him. But there was a couple of things that, that, that got brought up um, along the lines of white erasure and anti-whiteism. So he started, you know, befriending me and saying, uh, you know, you should come to Saudi Arabia. Come visit me. And, you know, he welcomed me to come visit him in Saudi Arabia. He said, you can come stay with me. You can be my guest. Uh, you know, I'll treat you like family. Um, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> he showed me pictures of his house and stuff and his cars and he is pretty darn wealthy by the looks of it. Has, you know, basically a mansion, in my perspective, uh, of a house. Pristine mansion with Land Rovers, Lexuses, cars. And so the guy and his family, I think, are pretty well off. And he said lots of people are like that in Saudi Arabia. So I didn't quite realize that. Apparently there's a lot of rich folks in Saudi Arabia. And uh, so I was stunned. I said, wow, you're, you're doing well, man. <laughs> you got a really nice house, really nice cars. And, and he said, yes, you, you can come with me. You, will, I'll, you can stay with me. You can stay at my house. You can, you know, I'll give you food, everything. You won't pay for anything. And it sounds like just incredible hospitality. And he said that's the norm there. People are all, you know, pretty hospitable like that. You come as their guest, you're not gonna pay for anything. They're gonna give you feasts, they're gonna treat you literally like a king. And it sounds like very, very nice hospitality. So I, you know, really appreciated that. Thanked him for the invite, said maybe I will make it over there. It looks like it would probably be a good time. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> anyway, getting onto the crux of the matter, folks, that was all well and good that he's showing me how, how well Saudi Arabia seems to be doing and, uh, and how hospitable the, a lot of the people are. That's, that's great. Happy to see that. Um, and here's where it got into the anti-white part. He showed me, he said there's actually a lot of foreigners living there now. 
working there and stuff and a lot of good jobs people can get apparently as foreigners so this is where it got straight into the anti-whiteism the anti-whiteism folks is so prevalent now and this is the real point that people jump to anti-whiteism almost immediately out of the blue because it is that prevalent in media and therefore in people's consciousness now um, he wanted to show me some videos of foreigners living in Saudi Arabia talking about how much they liked it there. And he, the first video he brought up was a, was a black American guy, so-called American black, that had moved to Saudi Arabia. And this guy looked like an absolute thug, thug, uh piece of garbage and this this black thug what he started talking about first when he was talking about how much he liked Saudi Arabia and of course he wanted to say that it was he thought it was so much better than America the first thing he starts talking about is a guy by the name of George Floyd first thing He's supposed to be talking about how, how great he thinks Saudi Arabia is. First thing he starts talking about is George Floyd. Hey everybody, I'm in Saudi Arabia. And and then jumps right into, everyone saw, you know, how George Floyd was brutally murdered for no reason by a cop, blah, blah, blah. And then he starts going on about skin color and how he is supposedly mistreated because he has black skin color brownish blackish skin color and we know nothing could be further from the truth so he launches into this anti-white narrative about George Floyd using that as a launching point and and then just rants a little bit about about skin color and that kind of thing and how Oh, he's mistreated because he's not white, essentially. And, uh, you know, anyone who, who sees skin color is, is just in the wrong and blah, blah, blah. Complete anti-white narrative, right? And now, the important thing I want to say here, folks, when somebody like that, when you have a non-white thug who has a vocabulary of second grade, um... And they start talking about this nonsense of the anti-white narrative. George Floyd was murdered wrongfully, blah, 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 or any other non-white. And RACISM is wrong, blah, blah, blah. And the non-whites are the victims, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and no one should see color and blah, blah, blah. We all understand here, and everybody needs to understand, that the only thing in their hearts when they're saying things like that is that they hate white people. It's not about anything they're saying. This this thug going off about G. Floyd or whatever. It wasn't about this so-called injustice to a to a non-white or you know um, or, or you know race or skin color or any of that other nonsense in general that he was talking about. It wasn't about any of that. He didn't specifically say it, but all that's on their minds and all that's in their hearts when they come out with stuff like that is that they hate whites. They hate whites. That's it. That's all they're saying. And that's all that's going on. So if you hear some thug start to go off and say, oh yeah, you know, this, this, this murder, this of this non-white or that non-white, whether it be Floyd or anyone else, oh, that was wrong. That's R-I-C-I-S-M, blah, 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 blah. When they start carrying on like that, all that they are confessing to you is that they hate whites. That's it. So nothing else needs to be addressed. Don't engage in the conversation. Don't start talking with them about, oh, this happened and that. You know, and it, you know, the cop was actually right and, you know, it didn't happen like this. The facts got messed up and blah, 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 blah. 
and don't go into anything about skin color or race or R-A-C-I-S-M supposedly don't go into anything about that just say hey you know what dude it, it just sounds like you hate white people that's all it's all I would have said to this stuff people get sucked into these things talking about oh the facts got messed up you know about G Floyd on and on down that rabbit hole which accomplishes nothing oh you know non-whites have it bad no they don't let me explain to you non-whites have it okay blah 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 skin color race this and that whatever they're they're saying you try to uh, you know debate with them point for point on what they're saying it is pointless none of that is the real crux of what they're getting what they're what's in their heart all this guy might as well have said and that he was making public on this video was that he hates whites he's just saying I hate white people I hate white people he's saying that anyone who you know uh, so-called discriminates on skin color or treats people differently based on skin color blah 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 anyone who does that is bad you know blah 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 all that they're doing is saying that they hate whites implicitly most of the time or sometimes explicitly so when people start when a non-white starts going off about oh I'm treated unfairly because I'm non-white on and on and on you know, skin color shouldn't make any difference, blah, 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 blah. You know what you say? You just hate white people. Sounds like you just hate white people. You know, no, 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 I'm talking about this and that and discrimination. No, 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 no. It, it sounds like you just hate white people. You just hate white people. And you stay on that and you make them prove that they don't. It really sounds like you hate white people, dude. Can you prove to me that you don't hate white people? Can you prove to me that you're not anti-white? Because what you're saying is disgustingly hateful of whites. Disgustingly disrespectful of whites and very anti-white. So can you, can you somehow flip that around on me? Show me that you're not anti-white? And if they don't change their tune, which a thug like this would not change their tune, then you just say, fine, you're just anti-white, dude. And you've won, you've called it as it is. And then he started going on and saying that this this black American guy likes Saudi Arabia, blah, 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 because they treat him better. Well, you know what? <laughs> Maybe that's the case. The thing is, is, you know, the, the Islamic, Arabic type of cultures, uh, that is more in line with 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 the African bio spirit than the West. So you know, a black so-called American guy would feel more at home in an Arab country because that is closer to their bio spirit. You know, and the common thing that he shares with 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 uh, With the country he was in, I would say, in his mind, the commonality would be anti-whitism. So a lot of times, it's the anti-whitism that is the common denominator that non-whites um, embrace. They go to another country and they find other non-whites, and those non-whites somehow have some anti-whitism, or maybe they perceive it as anti-whitism, or maybe they can use it as anti-whiteism, then they will they will embrace that. Because this guy this guy's ideology was anti-whiteism. So he was Saudi Arabia is a place that he can align his anti-whiteism with. He can align his anti-white views with Saudi Arabia. Because Saudi Arabia is largely non-white. Saudi Arabia is Islamic, which is a non-white religion. Uh, Religion, culturally, people-wise, uh, most of it there is non-white, bio-spirit. So, you know, an anti-white can align with that.
because they see they see it as a way that they they can continue their anti-white ideology even if the place is not necessarily anti-white um, themselves even if the place is not anti-white as a country or maybe the people the local people there are not anti-white but being a non-white biospirit an anti-white can use that uh, to um, to somehow bolster their own anti-whiteism and that's what this guy was doing um, so you know it it's a matter of bio spirits as we all know 